Hey everyone, Lindsay here with Field and Forest Products. This is video three of our Sarah Grant research series in which we're kind of covering one of the ongoing projects that we have here, evaluating the wine cap mushroom and how growing it may even be able to improve soil health below. We've completed our first year of the study and we're now excited to kind of move into year two this year. Um, one of the first things we wanted to do is kind of cover some of the exciting information and conclusions to be drawn from year one of the data we collected. Uh, one of the things that we've already noticed is that there are differences between the plots with and without the wine cap mushroom. Plots with the wine cap mushroom are noticeably warmer throughout the growing season which is a really excellent indication that the wine cap is growing well, spawn run is strong, and it may even be able to mitigate some of the negative impacts that adding a mulch layer to the top of the soil can have, such as reducing the soil temperature, which can be especially important for crops that require that warmer soil. Fortunately for us, those wine cap plots were significantly warmer than the mulch only plots. Furthermore, we noticed that the plots with the wine cap mushroom were already significantly shallower, meaning that that mushroom is already rapidly breaking down some of that organic layer that's on top of the soil. Um, compared to plots with mulch only and no wine cap, that decay will also occur, but by the native microorganisms and certainly not quite as fast as our specialty fungus like the wine cap mushroom. Um, those mulch only plots were on average 15 centimeters deep, whereas the wine cap plots were approximately 11 centimeters. So you can already see that significant decay happening by the actively growing mushroom. Lastly, and probably most exciting is our evaluation of the plant health within those plots. Um, one of the things we did regularly throughout the last, uh, last year, the first growing season, was to go through and physically or um, visually evaluate the differences in the health between the plants and the, and the treatment plots. Um, we have four plants per plot, and each were evaluated for things like fullness, overall greenness, size, and the presence of disease. Um, all plants were rated uh, comparatively, so what we did is we started by identifying the healthiest plants, and those were scored giving a 10, so the scale was 0 to 10. And then of course the sickest or smallest or most diseased plants were given a score of 1 or even 0 if the plant was no longer present. Um, between the control and the mulch plots, uh, there was very little difference between plant health on average, those plants were rated at about a four. Um, but what was exciting for us is the plants in the wine cap plots were significantly healthier with an average score of approximately eight on that scale from zero to 10. Um, this could be due to many things, but the difference was significant. Um, again, we have five replicates per treatment, so we're pretty excited by these preliminary results. We're certainly looking forward to a spring after this long winter and seeing what else the second year of our study can give us. Um, we will be replanting tomato plants and possibly another crop. And then at the, at the end of this second growing season, we will be evaluating those tissue samples for that ergothionine, reevaluating soil test results to see if they differ from our preliminary ones taken last spring, and then um, hopefully be able to draw some conclusions on just how powerful this wine cap mushroom can be. Thanks so much for listening today. Um, if you'd like more information, we did publish a progress report based on year one of our study. That can be found on the SARE website and we'll provide a link below. That will also include colored charts of some of our preliminary data and an overview of the project itself. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great day.